When I was a little kid, my dad taught me how to fly kites, even before I was big enough to hold them. And when I was in fourth grade, I was tasked to build my own kite. And I built it out of wood and paper. But instead of just making a single line kite like everybody else, mine had to have two lines so I could steer it. And when I was 15, I really wanted to impress my mom and grandmother by making a huge jump. So I took my biggest kite and went down to the beach on a stormy day. One of those days where the sand is blowing in your face and the clouds are just rushing by. And I had my mom hold down the kite while I ran down to grab the handles. And as soon as she let go, I was in the air, flying. <laughs> Quickly, I released, landed, but only had smaller bruises. But the kite continued down the beach, and one of the handles wrapped around a flagpole, smack, instantly it was in the ground. And it continued into the trees. <laughs> That was when I learned about the power of the wind. Why is it that all our kites end up in the tree as kids? What if, we could, what if they could fly by themselves so they don't end up in a tree? Well, if I was a seven-year-old, that's the question on my mind. What would it take to make a kite that could fly by itself? Luckily, that question has answered, been answered by me, 28-year-old engineer. So first of all, you would want to be able to steer by itself, and you want a kite that's able to take off and land by itself. And for the first challenge, it really needs to know to where it is accurately in the sky. And to do that, this kite is over there. It has a GPS and a ton of small sensors, the same sensors you find in your smartphone. And using all this information, it can figure out accurately where it is in the sky. The next step is to figure out the path, and we pre-programmed the path into the kite. And then it can use the same algorithms that you use to steer ships and trucks on the ground, but now to follow a path in the sky. And it has such a big brain that it can do these calculations hundreds of times a second, much faster than a seven-year-old who would crash the kite. I'm sure if you tried playing with kites, that you run, uh, you try to, that there's not enough wind. So you throw up the kite and you run backwards. Well, that's no fun. So we added small propellers on the kite so it can take off and land by itself. And that also means that it's able to fly when there's no wind. Well, in here, we are inside, there is no wind. Wanna go fly a kite? So, as I grew up, so did the kite. Inside this kite, there is sensors and algorithms and computers. And it has no more math than, than you learn in school. Yeah. Thank you. So this, this is a quarter size model, and the real version will be four times larger. And this one can fly for minutes at the time, and our next goal is to fly for 24 hours. It's mobile, flexible, and convenient. And it's actually designed to work just like a kid's kite in the sense that it's designed to break and to be fixed very easily. It's not a toy anymore. So now imagine if it could be used to harness the power of the wind. So we have this beautiful kite that's able to fly all by itself when there's a lot of wind. 
But how do we get the energy out of it? Well, amazingly, the same propellers we use to take off and land can be used in reverse. So just like an electric car, when you brake, you can recapture the energy. So can these propellers, and they actually work like small wind turbines, just spinning much, much faster. So if we can keep a kite in the sky, we can get energy from it. It may be strange to think about a kite being a power station, but consider this. The full-size version will be able to power 500 Kenyan households. So it truly is a power station in the sky. But it can do more. It's not just light, smartphones, and TVs. Renewable energy has made tremendous progress in the last 30 years and is now economically viable to put on the grid, but is still confined to the grid, and the grid doesn't move. This one can fly anywhere. But it solves another important problem, too. Ironically, renewable energy is actually more expensive if you're poor. And that's because it's much more expensive to finance when you don't have any money. And these kites being mobile means that completely new financing possibilities will be possible, and the people that need them the most will be able to benefit from them. Another thing most of us don't like to think about is mining. But mining is really a necessity for our future renewable energy infrastructure. Electric cars, batteries, even solar panels and wind turbines, they need raw materials. And these mines are often located far away from the grid in remote areas, using large arrays of diesel generators. And these kites are in a unique position to replace much of this diesel, making the transition to renewables much cleaner. So this is a quarter size model. It's much more practical to test and show you all. Um, but one of the big challenges when this one is flying through the sky is these lines that goes down to the ground. They actually create a significant amount of air resistance, and that resistance is just wasted energy. So what if we did something only a seven-year-old could think of? What if we put two kites on the same line? So most people think it's crazy just to make work with one kite that flies autonomously, so two kites is completely outrageous. But I wanted to prove that it's not so difficult. And one of the most amazing discoveries is that not only do you get double the amount of power, but you get four times the amount of power. So double the kites, half the resistance, quadruple the power. It is difficult, but impossible? No. We are the first company in the world to fly two kites on a single string. Thank you. But it's also been, been tough, um, and a lot of people don't think this is even worth getting into. Even my, my parents think it's a pretty bad idea. Um, <laughs> I've been spending almost two years by now, and I mean, it's not a well-paying job for sure. Um, but also industry experts, I mean, you would be met with skepticism like, I know how heavy the cable inside a normal tower is. I mean, this thing is never going to fly. Or how is it ever going to be cheap enough or reliable enough? How is this ever going to make sense? Pretty much every expert, at least in the established wind industry, says no. But this kite is only $1,000. And I've used less than $100,000 for two years of research. It's small, it's scalable, and it's simple. It's really the power of small and the power in the right place. This is mobile, renewable energy, the future of wind energy. It's all very neat in a way. I've been flying solo until now, but I would love if I could exchange I for we. I've come so far with so little cost and so little funding but the impact and innovation has been huge. 
but I need new flight partners to make this really take off. And together, we can make simple, clean, cheap energy to the people and places that need it the most. I need investors, partners, and engineers to help this big idea really take flight. Do you want to come and make kites with me? What would you say if you were seven? And what would you say now? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.